hello once again, YouTube. This is Zoo Tycooner Steve coming back with another episode of our exciting Let's Play Challenge Mode Zoo. Uh, you can see as we check our budgets here that the month of June, in which we purchased our very, very expensive cassowaries, we did go into the whole building the display and buying them. But the very next month, uh, since we laid off, I did it off camera so you didn't see it, but I laid off, didn't purchase any new animals, just kind of did some upkeeps, did hire a new staff member. But we still pulled out over $5,000 in profit, so we have a very happy runny zoo. Uh, we're back up to a total cash here of $21,917. So I think it's time we get back to work on building our zoo. Uh, question is, what are we going to do today? Well, I was looking at our big kind of pond here that just kind of came with the map, and originally I thought, well, I'm just going to cover that up, and then uh, d uh, just kind of make a display to go right in this area. But then I got to thinking that probably um, what I want to do is kind of, uh, well, basically, let me walk you through my thinking process. I was looking at our profits from our frogs, and um, if you remember, we put in a couple of very small frog displays, and they're just small right next to each other, and they, by far, represent the most donations we're getting. So I thought, since this is still a small zoo, since we're still kind of setting up, maybe we should make another set of sort of smaller exhibits close together, get the guests really excited, give them an opportunity to donate lots and lots of their sweet, sweet dollars. And because of this circular um, shape of the pond here, I was thinking what we would do is make like a little walk around area, kind of a little loop with a bunch of smaller displays, that would eventually loop back around to, oh, around here. And then we could have, like, a separate path going off into the distance. So our plan, let me switch to the map mode so you can get an idea of what I'm thinking, is to have kind of a, this path continuing on, going in a little loop, coming back to probably about this point, and then there would be another path taking you deeper into the zoo later on. But uh, this way, so the beginning of our zoo will basically be guests come in, walk past the mooses, past the spoonbill and the frogs, stop, have a bite to eat, go down the pathway to our cassowaries, see a couple smaller displays here, and go right back to our food court. So that way they have another opportunity uh, to go to the bathroom and to buy food and gifts once they're done walking through this little area. So I'm thinking that's going to be a really great idea. Um, so we're going to attempt to do that today. I don't really have it fully fleshed out, um, but we're going to start today uh, checking our animal roulette. I think we're going to use the European porcupines, which is something I saw which I thought were pretty cool because I don't think I've used them before. Um, but they look really, really cool. I was taking a peek at them earlier. So you can see they look really great. Um, and they're the appropriate size to start putting in sort of smaller displays. So that's going to be our plan today. We're going to at least get the European porcupine if it goes as quickly as I think I do, as I think it will, we'll go ahead and hit the animal roulette again and see if we can't find another smallish type animal to put in there. Uh, the porcupines do cost 3000 each, so it's not a cheap, cheap animal, but I think we can make our money back on that fairly quick uh, if we're smart and do it right. And I think we can be smart and do it right. Or at least I think I can be smart and do it right. I'm, I'm not positive. I'll probably screw it up. Um, but that's the plan. Uh, so I'm going to start by just kind of putting a pathway in, which kind of... I'm still going to cover up the pond, I ended up deciding. But just one that kind of describes the area we want to go in. And to make just kind of like a little... A uh, couple of smaller displays, probably all mammals. Um, but that's the plan. I'm thinking it's going to work wonderful. So that's where we're going to go. Yeah, okay. So let's get to work on the beginning of our small mammal displays here with our European porcupine.
well, we've got a bit of a problem. Um, so we were chugging along just fine, and I went ahead and put in my, uh, hmm, why don't that go away? Interesting. Uh, so I was going ahead and chugging in, putting in my European uh, porcupines, and apparently the European porcupines need a huge amount of space. Uh, we even tried widening the exhibit there. Uh, still, just getting these very, very sad icons, which means we cannot afford to put our European porcupines here, which is very, very, very sad, because it also means we just blew 600, uh, 600 bucks, or 6,000 bucks, I should say. Uh, which is not a good thing, since we are on a limited budget. Uh, I do have the option, I consider briefly, of extending to, because I kind of already twitched in another exhibit uh, for another animal, and I did have the option of just making that one big exhibit, but that's not what I want to do here. So I'm actually am going to let these porcupines go. Um, very, very sad, very, very big screw-up on our part. Should have tested that beforehand. Uh, but what I just did was kind of hit the animal, uh, the, the randomizer a few times. Eventually, I found this guy, which I hope, I hope, I hope will work for us. This is the checkered sengi, and the thing that appeals to me is he's small. He's kind of cute. I never used him before, and he's only six hundred dollars. So what we're gonna try to do is kind of save ourselves. You can see he's cute down there. We just kind of try to save ourselves here by converting those porcupine exhibit into a checkered sengi exhibit. Um, so that's, yeah, definitely something I should have checked beforehand, uh, but I didn't because I was being stupid. So uh, just note to yourselves that um, uh, something you definitely need to check out for a uh, zoo like this, uh, where we're actually having to try to take care of our animals and make them as happy as possible. Um, so let's get started here on the uh, checkered sengi exhibit uh, instead of porcupines. Something that I really, really should have checked out beforehand. I'm really, really upset with myself for not doing that. Um, yeah, and even a lot of the things I researched, it doesn't look like it's going to be quite right for these guys. Yeah, they're even a different biome. Ah, crap, this is all wrong. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get it done. We'll get it fixed here. Um, so, you've got a tutorial on how to build a... Uh, insufficiently small porcupine exhibit, and now we're going to get a tutorial on how to build a hopefully correct size checkered sengi exhibit. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is check and see what kind of things they have that overlap, which isn't much. I'm going to be able to keep the water dishes, not much else. Ugh, that's going to be about it. Ugh, this is, this is rough. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Okay, well, uh, alrighty, so let's get rid of all of this crap. We can probably keep the rocks and that tree. Uh, all the plants need to go, though, because none of these plants are right now. Uh, I can't, the food's not right. Oh, this is terrible. I feel like an idiot. Um, but it's good. It's a teachable moment. We can all learn from it. Mostly me. I can learn from it, because that was stupid of me. Uh, okay, tropical rainforest. There we go. Um... Alrighty, and we'll get you one of these little low-hanging shelters. Okay. And food, you do do fruits. Put two of them around. Um, there's one water dish. I thought I had put two down. Maybe I hadn't. Yeah, let's put one more water dish, so no matter where they are in the exhibit, they can find it. Um, looks like they're actually omnivores, so let's also give them a meat option just in case they don't want fruits. Sometimes they get picky. Uh, I'm researching a salt lick for them. That's going to be great. Um, uh, little trees? Any little trees? Nope. Nope. Probably going to... Oh, okay. These guys. These guys are good. Uh, but for some reason, not enough headroom. Okay. So I might have to delete the roof real quick and then put those in. Are these come from the right... I don't even know where these guys come from in the world. I've never played with these creatures before, either. Um, but I was really glad when they popped up, since they are only 600 bucks. Okay, uh, they're in Africa. Let's check them on the Zoopedia real quick. Uh, it's also called the Checkered Elephant Shrew. Okay, that makes more sense. And they're, like, in Central Africa, like, along the Congo River, it looks like. Okay, so I kind of know what I'm dealing with here. Uh, so, that's actually a, uh, a tree works, but it's actually, like, uh, Southeast Asia. 
three, so we're probably going to be mostly plants, which is not a huge problem for me. Da -da -da. Do, 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 do. Um, okay, I think I'm... Yeah, most of these things are going to be from the wrong part of the world, so we're probably not going to be able to match it up perfectly. Uh, so we'll just put in things that look nice. Um, but uh, sorry about that. Uh, that's something that you do need to check, and I'm, I think it's a good lesson for us all. Uh, but we're going to switch back to the music mode now. So hopefully uh, these elephant trues work out wonderful. I'm sure they will. I'm sure I won't make two mistakes in one episode. What are the odds of that, right? Right. Let's get going. Everyone, welcome back. Uh, you can see we're standing outside of our cassowary display, and obviously now, if you follow the path, you go directly towards that totally pre-planned elephant true display uh, that we were working on from the beginning, which is right here. And I actually think it did come out pretty well. Let's see if you can actually see one of our shrews. I put a lot of shrew. Oh, there they are. They're actually right up close, and they're quite cute little guys too. Uh, I'm kind of glad I have them. Salt lick up close there. Um, Okay, so, uh, I just put this in, I haven't let anything run yet, so nobody's donated to our shrews yet. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we did not make too big of a mistake. Obviously, we uh, kind of threw away almost $6,000, uh, which is very upsetting, because we are such a young zoo. Uh, but the good news is, if we have made a terrible mistake, like if for some reason the shrews don't work, we do know that uh, as the sh uh, zoo was... Uh, before we began this episode, we were making about $5,000 a month. So if this turns out to be a total disaster, what we can always do is just bulldoze down this entire circle, uh, eliminate all this, and just go back to what we were. And in theory, we should still start building up money again, and hopefully we can fix it. But um, hopefully, hopefully, that won't even be a problem, that uh, the sh people will donate to the shrews. Um, which are actually pretty cool little guys, uh, and that we can continue to put in a couple smaller displays around the circle here, uh, just so we can have a little looping area, so we can lead people right back to our food court, and then we'll begin with that branch off, uh, so people can go uh, to other parts of the zoo, which we'll eventually start doing. Um, okay, but that's where we go for now. Um, <laughs> Animals next time. Uh, we do have, I was looking at what we have available, we do have the Sundry Loris, um, which would fit in one of our smaller displays. So, uh, those may be what we do next time, because they are a pretty cool little animal. Uh, the only downside is that they're too expensive for us right now. They're 5000 each, and right now I only have 8000 so I couldn't afford multiple ones yet. Uh, you're going to be too big. Let's go ahead and delete some of the ones that don't look like they're going to work for us here. Ah, uh, Roadrunners. Not quite what I'm looking for, but um, I'm kind of hoping for small mammals. Um, doo -doo -doo. What is that? That's a platypus. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to avoid platypuses just because I already did a um, exhibit tutorial for platypuses not too long ago. Uh, although they would be the right size. Um, hmm, looks like we might be doing... Oh, uh, what are you? Some kind of is it a basara or 
Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Might do one of those guys. Um, wouldn't put I wouldn't put him in that, but uh, maybe put him in the middle area here or on the one of the sides. So that's, that's doable. What? How expensive is this guy? Do do do. Let me load it up again here. He's he's more expensive than the Loris, of course. Okay. Um, so what I think I am going to let it do is uh, do some off-screen time, let the uh, game kind of roll, see if we can't build up a big enough supply that we can go ahead and put in our lorises in probably this display right here. Um, but I hope that, uh, I hope we all learned something from this episode. I know I did, and that's take the time before you begin recording an episode just to double-check the amount of space the animals need. It's a good note to have, um, but I hope you learned something too. Thank you so much for watching me today. If you do have any ideas to improve our zoo or what you'd like to see next, be sure to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the episode today, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today, and I'll see you again soon with less mistakes, I'm sure.